Who would you trade straight up for Atlanta's number one pick? With Clay's future in question with the team, he suspiciously unfollowed the Warriors on social media. Where do talks currently stand between the Clippers and Paul George as the clock keeps ticking down toward the opt-in deadline? The Boston Celtics just won their 18th championship against the Dallas Mavericks last week, and now we come to the offseason. We got the draft happening tonight, and the rest of the offseason will follow suit shortly after. Here in this video, I'll talk about the teams that are yet to make big moves and determine what they should do to make their team better. Since the draft is happening tonight, let's talk about the team that controls the entire landscape of the NBA for one night only. The Atlanta Hawks jumped up to secure the number one pick in this draft, and there's been many speculations as to what they're going to do. Are they going to trade to Trey Young and start from scratch using this pick? Are they going to trade to Jante Murray and kind of do a retool instead of a complete rebuild? Or are they going to trade the number one pick and get a valuable piece to move them into title contention? Here's what the Hawks should do. Their problem last year was offensive production out of their big guys, as their sole center on their team, Clint Capella, isn't as good offensively. What I would try to do as the Hawks GM is trade the number one pick for a stretch big, like Carl Anthony Towns or Miles Turner. That way, it relieves the pressure off Trey Young and Murray to score so much, and they can run more pick and pops, opening the floor more. If they are unable to do something like that, then draft Alex Sar with the first pick. Getting a defensive minded player while having the potential to develop his offensive game would help the Hawks win games next season. I'm keeping Young and Murray no matter what. The backcourt duo played well together last year in my opinion, so pair them with another star and I think they're a championship level team next year. As well as the team with the number one pick, there's also another storyline with the draft. Where's Ronnie James going? Standing at a measly 6 foot 1 and underperforming massively in college, every team knows what you get when you draft Bronny. You draft Bronny and you get one of the greatest players of all time and his dad, LeBron James. As for what team will draft him, the only team that has any incentive of drafting him are the Los Angeles Lakers. Bronny only has interest from a few teams and has been very picky when him and his agent were talking about what team he'd go to. He'll go to the Lakers with the 55th pick and continue the circus show that the Lakers are at this point. After signing JJ Redick as their head coach, the Lakers look like they don't have a care for their future. What I would do as the Lakers GM is prepare for seasons without LeBron. I understand he makes a ton of money for the organization and this is a business at the end of the day, but we'll look back on this LeBron Lakers era and think about how terrible each decision the front office made. With the 17th pick, I pick up Zach Eady and try to develop him as much as possible. This draft is very underwhelming, so why not take a risk on the best player in college basketball these past two years? LeBron and Russell would improve his development tremendously should they accept their player options. Edie and Davis in the front court is a dangerous defensive lineup, something that lacked for the Lakers last year. In free agency, look for veterans to help young guys like Austin Reeves and Rui Hachimura. Guys like Patrick Beverly and Danilo Gallinari would be perfect for this Lakers team, and they wouldn't cost that much. With these moves, you get to build around Anthony Davis and prepare for the future without LeBron. Getting out of the draft, we go into free agency. Big names like Paul George, Klay Thompson, and James Harden are set to change teams this offseason. Let's check out the certain teams I believe will make big moves in free agency. Starting it off, the Clippers are forced to either be winners or losers of this offseason. With two of their main pieces being free agents in Paul George and James Harden, the Clippers have decisions to make. What I would do if I were the Clippers is let James Harden walk and work a sign-in trade with Paul George. I've said time and time again that James Harden ruins teams due to his ego, so re-signing him would be cancerous to the organization. It would be nice to sign Paul George back, but he doesn't want to be there anymore and only wants to go to teams who don't have money. Trade Paul to the Sixers and get at least three first round picks in return. That way you can kind of recoup some picks from that awful George and SGA trade. Now. The Clippers can start a rebuild that they very much need, and the Sixers pair a very much needed third star with Embiid and Maxi. The other team that needs to make important moves is the Golden State Warriors. The Warriors have a glaring issue they're dealing with. What's going to happen with Klay Thompson? Thompson has been a legend within the Warriors organization since they drafted him in 2011, but he's been very disappointing these past couple years, wondering if the Warriors are going to re-sign him this offseason. What I would do if I'm the Warriors GM? 
I do my best to get Clay Thompson back to keep that same championship culture on this team, but I won't overpay. I'd give him max $10 million a year and place him in a six-man role, helping with Brandon Pod's development. Championship culture is very important in Golden State, and while the Warriors still have Steph Curry, they will always be in title contention. They need a guy like Clay Thompson. There are still a lot of teams that are going to make some moves, but these are the teams that control the NBA landscape for the time being. All that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please like and subscribe, and I'll talk to you guys later.